Hi Booktube! Lynette here and today's video is going to be all about the books I read in the month of November. Now I know there's a gap in the books that I've read. I haven't told you what I read in July, August, September and October but hopefully in the next couple of weeks that will be rectified. I just need to sit down and do some do some working out of what I read and make some notes and you know have something worthwhile putting out on YouTube for you. But November. November was a much better reading month for me. I was, the start of the month was slower um, as I was still grieving and coming to terms with things um, but yes towards the end of the month things sped up a little bit and I managed to get quite a bit of reading done. So I've put together some stats for you and in the month of November, I managed to finish nine books. Of those, three books were paperback, four, four books were ebooks, and two books were audiobooks. Sorry if I keep looking down to the side, I've got my notes here. I read a total of 2,860 pages and I listened to 28 hours and 57 minutes of audio. Uh, the highest rated book was 4.75 stars and the lowest rated was uh, 3 star with the average for the whole of the month being 3.86 stars. I read a mixture of fantasy romance, contemporary romance and crime this month. So it was a little bit of crime, so it was a little bit different for me. Crime isn't something you see crop up very often on my channel so it was actually nice to, to read something slightly different from the fan normal fantasy or romance um that usually fills my uh red list um i did say in the month of november for my tbr that i was going to do the best i could to um move forward with series because there was also uh steph love's book uh club readathon final book support group um, for one of the weeks in November was running and I decided to extend it to the whole month. So what did I read in terms of series? Apart from one book, the rest were all part of a series. So there were seven, eight of them came from a series. Six of them were actually series continuations. Two of them were series finishes. Um, and one, as I said, was a standalone book. Um, it wasn't part of any series. Three of the books I did purchase, um, but they were all bought before the 13th of November. Now, if you've seen my video from a few weeks ago, you'll know that I've actually started um, a book buying slash reading challenge. Um, and basically the premise is I have to read the books I own before I can buy new ones. I've set myself the challenge of reading 15 books before I can buy any new ones. And I've decided that at the point that I can buy new ones, I'm not going to limit myself to just buying one book. So if there are a couple of books I want, if I've continued a series maybe, and it's not one that I finished and I don't own the next ones, I'm going to allow myself to buy them if I can't borrow them. Um, but I'm not going to restrict myself to, to just buying one book every 15 books. Um, I might, I might, I'm, I can't walk into a bookshop and just pick up one book. That's highly unlike me. Uh, so yes, I'm going to give myself license that if there are a couple of books I want, I'm going to get them. But I'm going to try and be intentional about the buying. So yes, so how did I do towards the challenge? Well, the challenge started on the 13th of November, which was the day that I filmed that video. Um, like I say, I'd bought three books um, before that. I haven't bought any books since. So yay me, <laughs> not buying any books, three books. Buying three books in one month is, is unheard of. Um, I don't do hauls on this channel because I, I don't keep track of what I buy properly. Um, but yes, three books in one month is a minor miracle. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that. Um, all nine of the books I read were ones that I owned already when I started the challenge. And when I actually started the month of November. However, I'm only going to count four of them for the challenge. So, of the 15 books, I have completed four. 
and I only need to read another 11 and I can buy more books. Um, the reason I'm only counting four of them is because they are the four that I finished after the challenge started. The other five, even though I already owned them, um, I'm not going to count them. Plus, one of them was my book was a book club book, which I've already said that my book club books aren't, unless they're ones that I've owned for a while, um, I'm not going to count them. Um, so yes, I've, I've, I think four is quite good. Um, that means that yes, it's probably going to take me at this rate three, four months to be able to buy books, maybe more, um, may, or hopefully less, um, because December, if you've seen my December TBR, then you know that I'm trying to read books that were on my TBR early this year, and all of those books are ones that I already owned. Um, so I'm not going to have to buy or borrow any of those books to finish out that, that reading challenge, the December challenge. Um, so yes, so I'm doing really quite well. Um, and I've actually quite enjoyed my reading this month. Like I say, yes, the lowest rated is a three star, uh, but I did enjoy them all. Um, they're all ones that I would read from the author again. Uh, and they're all ones that um, that I'm not disappointed I picked up. So, what were the books that I finished in November? I'm going to take you through them in the order that I finished them, like I always do. Um, but I will tell you um, the series name, if I can remember it for some of them. Um, I might have to look them up and edit. Um, yes, my, my brain isn't that brilliant when it comes to little details. Uh, so... Yes, um, I finished nine books. I'm currently, currently really loving fantasy romance. And uh, there's a, a few books in here this month that come under the fantasy romance genre. Um, and I am itching to read fantasy romance this month, but then they're not really... <sighs> yes, um, I don't really have any in my stack of ones that I need to finish this month. So... Let's talk about them. Let's stop procrastinating and start talking about books. The first book that I finished was Hidden Huntress by Danielle L. Jensen. This is book two in her Malediction trilogy. It's a young adult fantasy romance series and it's based around a young girl, Cecile, who's taken hostage by the trolls and she is made to, or not given really much choice other than to bond with the troll prince. Um, during the first book, it's all about how um, Cecile and Tristan, the prince, are bonding in more than just a physical, like the, the physical uh, signs of them being bonded, not physical as in physical love. Um, but yes, it's all about how uh, she comes to terms with her situation. She's learning about the new situation that she's in. She's learning about the people that effectively because she's now a princess she's ruling over and book two follows a few months on from the end of book one um and i thoroughly enjoyed it as soon as i finished book one i needed to start uh, book two and i did actually restart because um book one stolen songbird was on my tbr before uh, because it was an audiobook that i downloaded years ago and never listened to so I did restart my Audible subscription so that I could continue this series and continue it in audio because I really I, I really enjoyed the narrator's voices. And uh, there was a few times um, when I was on my way to work where I'm not sure whether I was actually fully concentrating on the road because I was listening to the audiobook so closely. But I do highly recommend them. Uh, very, very well um done and I really enjoyed it and actually I gave Hidden Huntress four stars. Um, if you've got a teen um, who's looking for something in the fantasy romance um, then definitely recommend this. My second finish of the month is Fatal Voyage by Kathy Rikes. This is part of her Temperance Brennan series. It's book four in the series. Book four? Deja Dead, Death Du Jour, yes. Uh, it's book four in the series. Um, I read these books many years ago. Uh, they were given to me. My sister gave me the first book in the series for, as a birthday present many years ago. And I kind of got hooked. 
I started reading Fatal Voyage earlier this year when I was trying to continue series. I was enjoying it, but I put it down um, to concentrate on other items and never really picked it back up again. It's crime fiction and we are following the main character, Temp Brennan, as she is solving murders. In this case, she gets called to the scene of an aeroplane crash and she finds a body part that isn't linked to any of the crash victims. Um, from there, uh, things take a turn against her and she has some, there's some danger um, involved, personal danger for her. Um, but in the end, ultimately, it works towards her solving the mystery and solving the crime. Um, again, they're great books, very well done. The author Kathy Reichs knows what she's writing about um, on the anthropological and forensic um, because she is a forensic anthropologist herself um, and this is work that she actually used to do before she became a writer. Um, I really do recommend them. I've enjoyed them all. I, I'm not up to date with the series. Again, it's a series that I fell behind with um, when I was in a big reading slump and I never really picked back up and I just want to get back into them again so I'm slowly working my way through um, each uh, book in the series that I've already read to hopefully get to the point where I fell behind and so that I can read the new ones and catch up and find out where Temp is in her life. And the next two books were the best two books of the month. They are 4.25 and 4.75 stars respectively. Um, and I'm going to talk about them both together because they are both in the same series. The first book is Glint by Raven Kennedy. And the second book is Gleam by Raven Kennedy. These are books two and three of her Plated Prisoner series. They are fantasy romance. Um, they are getting a little more steamy as they go through uh, the books. Um, I really enjoyed Guild when I read it uh, earlier on this year. Um, it's not included in a wrap-up because I haven't done, filmed that wrap-up yet. Um, but yes, I just, by the time I read Glint, I was itching for Glint and I had to read it. Uh, I adore adored Rip. In the first book, I did not like Midas at all, King Midas. I loved Oren, and then with the fact that she's now captive of Rip, I absolutely loved Rip um, and who he was and how he treated Oren. Um, and yeah, I just, I can't really talk about them because I can't talk about them without spoiling it. Um, but I really loved Gleam. Gleam, I am gutted that uh, Glow, I think, is the next one. Yes, Glow is the next one. It is not out in paperback yet, or at least if it is, I've got to pay a small fortune for it. I am waiting for the publisher version of it to come out so that it will match the three that I've already got. But I have adored this book, and as soon as Glow is out in paperback, I am heading straight to the bookshop, and I am getting it. I may even buy... I may even... I may even break the book buying ban to get it. it they are that good. Um, they're not steamy, steamy, but in this book, it, the tension really, really wraps up because Oren, in this book, Oren um, has come into more of herself and has been able to look at her previous life through a different lens and she starts to see things differently. Um, so yes, a very, very good read. Uh, like I say, Gleam is a 4.75 book. Um, I'm wondering if they're getting better every time. Is Glow going to be a five star? But I won't find out till next year. And the next finish was another high rated. It is Warrior Witch by Daniel L. Jensen. And this is book three and the final book in the Malediction trilogy. It picks up right where book two left off. I can't talk about it because it would spoil book two. Um, but there is a curse. Things have happened. Things are moving forward. I gave this book four stars. Um, there is only one thing that kept it from being a fight. And that is how the author has dealt with the end of this book. And it's... 
we all we all talk, those of us who read fantasy talk about the fact that we really don't like the fact that sometimes um all of the main players survive sometimes you have to kill off the good guys now this isn't that case but it's that similar kind of premise um it was harsh and it was hard and yeah it was difficult to to i was actually in tears what as i was listening to that section of the book while i'm while i was trying to drive to work i was in tears that's not a good thing on any day um but yes i did thoroughly enjoyed it it was a mostly satisfying end to the series and yes i definitely pick up more books by danielle l jensen in fact i think i've got the bridge kingdom um on my radar to read at some point not allowed to add more series to ones i'm already reading at the moment but um definitely definitely a new author that i'm really enjoying hi editing lynette here um, I suddenly realised as I was going through and editing that I completely forgot to talk about one of the books that I read. Uh, so sorry if this is a bit wobbly because I am holding you in my hand so I'll try and make this quick. Um, after I finished Warrior Witch I moved on to Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. This is the final book in her, um, trilogy, in her quadrilogy. Um, I can't remember the series name. I'll try and put it here. I'll try and find it down the bottom and um, put it down the bottom for you. Uh, but it's a series of short stories following on from the end of winter and just catching up on the lives of Cinder, Scarlet Cress and Winter um, and the men that they fell in love with. Uh, really, really enjoyed them. Uh, it was really nice to be back in the world. It actually made me in some way want to reread the story because there were little bits that I, um, there were little bits that I'd forgotten um, and would really like to go back to and reread again. Uh, I really enjoyed because you had a little bit of a prequel, um, which was from Scarlet's point of view, and then all the rest of them then took place after the ending of the series. Um, did really enjoy them. I read Fairest quite a while ago. Uh, so yes, this was another series continuation. Again, this is another young adult fantasy romance series. And again, it's another one that I recommend if you've got teenagers or if you enjoy your young adult romance, fantasy romance, give them a go. There's a little bit of sci-fi in them as well um, because of the nature of it. So definitely these are ones that I picked up because they were recommended to me by a romance book club group that I was in at the time and yeah they're really glad that I did read them and I'm really pleased I can finally say that this series is completed um, and it's another one knocked off of my list. The next book is another one that fell below the four star mark and that is Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman. This one I wasn't sure about um i've given it 3.75 stars i still absolutely enjoyed nick and charlie's relationship there's just a couple of things that have cropped up in this one um so there's um eating disorder and self-harm in this one and they're given brief mentions now i do think having read um a little bit more into the fourth um volume I haven't actually read it yet, but I've read a little bit about it. I do understand that actually maybe she tackles it in more detail in the next books. Um, but for this one, because it was just there and then move on, um, it did make me wonder. Um, the eating disorder, I think it was slightly more... Um, I think I could recognise it because... Because the way the character deals with how they manage food is something that I recognize and something that I deal with daily for myself. So I, I have every intention of reading volume four and it won't be this year because I have a pile to read for December, um, but it probably will be January, definitely at some point. Um, in fact, Steph has already announced there is another round of final book support group in January. So I'm probably going to read volume four for that. Um, but yeah, I, I am enjoying these books. They're lovely. They're wholesome in some ways. The relationship between Nick and Charlie is so sweet. 
um very caring yes absolutely love this book this series and definitely and definitely recommend them i don't actually i don't think there's any books on this list that i don't recommend um because uh, i think i'd recommend them all the eighth book that i finished is let it ride by vivian arend this is book four in her thompson and son series and it's again another series continuation it's a very short book very short novel um and it follows or the whole series follows a family uh in who live in a town called rocky mountain home which is in the canadian rockies and we follow in you know each uh, family member as they find and fall in love and in this case uh, it's no exception uh, we have in this time round we have Maggie who has returned to live in Rocky Mountain House um, and she's returned with her husband and her husband has made good friends with um, the Thompson brother that Maggie falls in love with and I've forgotten his name already and I haven't written it down and I'm so sorry I will put it at the bottom of the screen um, and yes unfortunately um there is a tragic accident and maggie's husband dies and she leans on her husband's best friend her old best friend because before she left rocky mountain house they were friends they just never got as far as becoming romantic with each other um thoroughly enjoyed it it's a sweet romance it's about how uh people looking in on the outside into a relationship can judge you um it's also about how you let that affect you and how you cope with your um romantic life yourself and it's about how you can put aside other people's judgment and it's about communication between a couple and i just whipped through it really quickly it was really sweet really refreshing after some of the heavier top heavier books that i've read some of the heavier topics that were in those um and if you like contemporary romance then i'd say give vivian arend a go she actually does write some uh, paranormal romance as well she's one of the early romance readers that i picked up after i started reading romance in my late mid to late 20s and i thoroughly recommend each and every book by her that i've read so she's definitely an author to check out my final finish of the month is How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey or Bella Mackay, I think. I'm not quite sure. I gave this book three stars, three, three and a half stars. Um, I, it's, it's about a young woman um, who is in prison for a murder that she didn't commit. However, you know right from the start that she has committed six other murders that nobody knows about. The whole story is based around her she's writing her memoir of why she's in prison um, and how she killed six members of her own family and why uh, i enjoyed this book i enjoyed the mysterious element of it it took me a little while to get going it took me until the second murder to really get into it um for reasons um, and those of the book club who watch my videos <laughs> know what those reasons are because yes um anyway moving on um <laughs> it, it was good it wasn't a bad crime book it wasn't a great crime book um it wasn't as good as fatal voyage was um and i had some issues with it there were there was just some issues i kept finding that she was very descriptive and very judgmental of what people were wearing um where they were um and it just and different other thing you know the wine they drank and it just kept pulling me out of the story a little bit every time that happened i was just like really do we do we we know you're judgmental about these things do we really need to keep going and yeah um would i recommend it yeah i think it's a debut novel so yes um, I'd be interested to see how the writer develops. Um, would I recommend it to season crime readers? If you want something a bit lighter, probably. Um, but again, like I say, I mean, there was a, a depth. I just... The ending. The ending, for me, um, 
it left some gaping holes. Is it going to be a series? What did the um, main character do when she got the information that she got? You know, there, there's just a whole, yes. Le it left questions and I can't really, it's just one of those books that now after the fact, I really can't put into words what it was. There was just something that didn't quite hit, it was good, but it didn't quite hit the mark. Um, so yeah, around the three star mark for that one. So those were the nine books, some stats, and the nine books that I read in the month of November. What did you read in November? Do you have anything you can recommend? Not series, please. Um, and preferably not ones I'd have to buy either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, then please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then please subscribe to the channel. I try to make videos and put them up every Monday at 6.30pm UK time, but that is a struggle at the moment. I'm doing my best. But I do look forward to seeing you in the very next one. Bye!